I'm just so impressed with folks who came in person and those of you who are at home, I'm delighted you're with us as well. I want to start as always by thanking the Hoboken Library for allowing us to have these hybrid art classes. It's just so amazing that we can do art in isolation as well as here in person. So if you're someone who likes quiet and privacy to do your work, you can do it. If you're someone who needs community to do your work, you have that option as well. And we have a large group today. This is very cool. All right, we are launching into the month of September and our approach this month is different from what it's been for a long time in the months past. In the months past, we were focusing on a particular artist and I would show you a slideshow of their work and we would spend some time talking about their work and getting inspired by the artist's aesthetic and process and technique. We're not gonna do that in the month of September, although we might look at some particular artist's work, but this month- I'll just wait for the green traffic light out of us, so we have to either go train due to construct traffic out of us. So I forgot to lay ground rules. Please, those of you who are at home and on your personal tech devices, please remain muted during the class. If you do have comments that you wanna make or questions that you wanna ask, at that point, you can unmute. Oh, Yeko, you're here. Aren't you in somewhere in Asia? Awesome. Must be the middle of the night. So welcome. Um, I am in Germany. Oh, you're in Germany. So welcome. Yeah. Well, Wilkemann, that's so incredible that you're with us today. So exciting. All right, and here comes Lizzie. But this month, we are going to learn instead the techniques and skills for drawing realistically. Now, for those of you who are my veteran students, this is old news for you folks, and it will be review for you. I encourage you to be patient and go through the same exercises that everyone will be doing today because they work and you know they work. You may forget that they work because it's been a long time since we've done them, but these are tried and true exercises that I had to do in art school and that artists have been doing for centuries. And I mean, literally for centuries. The Renaissance artists invented these. Now, we have a technical problem that those of you at home will be facing, but the good news is in the digital age, you will have access to the internet and the things that I will be handing out to people here in person as hard copy, you will be able to access online, I hope. If you don't have the ability to access these things online, I'm gonna offer suggestions to you of things that you can do as alternate options. All right, any questions so far? None whatsoever. All right, today we are going to launch into a topic called drawing on the right side of the brain. This is a subject that was made very popular by a woman named Betty Edwards. She, in fact, wrote a book called, guess what? Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. You can, 
either go to your local library. I believe we have a copy of this book right here at the Hoboken Library. Or go online and quite easily find this book. I recommend it highly if you want to learn how to draw realistically. Not because I buy whole cloth into her philosophy and her ideas, but because the drawing exercises that she offers in the book are the same drawing exercises that I had to do in art school. A lot of them. Some of them are drawing exercises that she's picked up in other places or that she might have invented. There is also an exercise book that accompanies her textbook. The first book I held up is a textbook. This is a workbook that you can literally draw in. So I recommend this as well. This you can definitely purchase on Amazon or if you have some fundamental problem with Amazon, which many of us do, you can find it elsewhere online. And there are pages that you can actually draw on, as I mentioned. It's a useful workbook. And some of the pages that I'm going to be referring to and handing out today come from this workbook, also called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain Workbook. All right. So now I'm going to show you a slideshow that I created that is a brief overview of the scientific information that Betty Edwards uses in her book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, because there is a belief in the science and art community that if you can access the right side of your brain and learn to think using more of the right side of your brain, you will become a more visual person. There is now a lot of debate as to whether or not this is factually true. When I first started teaching art, this was the gospel truth. And it was believed to be true until fairly recently. And after we do the slideshow that explains the science behind Betty Edwards' theory, I'm going to talk to you briefly about the new information that refutes her theory. And then we're going to start doing our own drawing. But I feel it's my responsibility to tell you both sides of the issue so that you can decide for yourselves. Everybody okay with that? All right, I'm getting thumbs up from the home front. You guys here okay with that? Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna share the screen and we will launch into our slideshow. It's not a very long slideshow because the theory of right brain thinking is pretty simple. You don't have to be a neurophysicist or a rocket scientist to get this. Good morning, Tamara. I should have started by saying that. You don't have to be a scientist to understand this stuff. It's pretty easy. So here we go. Drawing on the right side of the brain, learning the powers of observation. The whole trick 
to learning how to draw realistically is learning how to observe and truly see what is in front of you. How many times a day do we walk past objects and not actually see them? We take them for granted. It happens all the time, all the time. But visual people are constantly engaged with what they see. You know those kinds of people. You frequently walk down the street with them and they go, wow, did you see that? Look at that, isn't that beautiful? They're the people who probably draw well or take beautiful photographs, who you may actually envy because they're so visual. They really are constantly engaged with what they see around them. Well, Betty Edwards believes that we can all become more visual or what she calls more right brain. Watch this slideshow to find out more. I'm not the salesperson for Betty Edwards, though. Please remember this. We are going to take bits and pieces from her theory. Okay, so this is the book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Here's the basic theory. It was believed by many, many, many neuroscientists, as I said, until recently, that the two sides of the brain worked independently, that the left side of the brain, and the brain is divided into two hemispheres, that is scientific fact, but it was believed that the left side of the brain was the logical, mathematical, linguistic, symbolic side of the brain. In fact, the side of the brain that we have been constantly taught to use over and over and over again, particularly those of us who've grown up in this part of the world. When we go to school, what is valued the most? Our ability to do mathematics, our ability to read and write. Those, up until now, scientists believe those were functions of the left side of the brain, right? So teachers applauded us, encouraged us, rewarded us for strengthening the left side of the brain. The right side of the brain is the side of the brain, it was believed, that only was visual. Visual, spatial, it thought about lines, colors, shapes, textures, sound, movement, rhythm, balance, light and dark. Texture. What does that all remind you of? Art. So the right side of the brain was believed to be the side of the brain that had to do with art. The side of the brain that was less encouraged in school, correct? How many times a week did you go to art class? If at all, if you were lucky, once a week, right? It's also the side of the brain that is good for sports, for drama, for music, for creative writing, poetry, for example. It was believed that we relied on the right side of the brain for anything creative and imaginative. Okay, next slide. This is another illustration of the way it was believed the two hemispheres work. I put this up just because I love this drawing. It really illustrates the difference between the left side of the brain might work and the right side of the brain. See how creative the right hemisphere might look and the left side. 
So the left side of the brain is about letters, numbers, everything logical and symbolic, things that stand for other things. But the right side of the brain is about colors, imagination, everything vibrant and alive. And again, this one makes it even more obvious. I don't have my cursor so I could minimize this box. Sorry, guys who are here. This is in your way, I know. But this one really spells it out for everyone to see. Any questions? I found all of these on the internet. These are not in Betty Edwards' book. So the left side of the brain is logical, verbal, digital, symbolic. It's all about order and control and rationality and objective linear systems and analysis. Whereas it's believed the right side of the brain is about creativity, images, art, music, movement, dance, sports. And again, so emotional intelligence, also expression, imagination, creativity on the right, logic on the left. Language, math, analysis on the left. And I disagree. I've always disagreed with the idea of science being on the left side because the scientific method and the artistic process, and I've talked about this before, are the same. You have a problem, you create a method, you come up with a solution, and it either works or it doesn't, and you go back to the drawing board. But science is where we get into this issue of whether or not these processes are separated into the halves of the brain. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. And here you cannot forget now that there is this belief, there has been this belief up until now that the two halves of the brain were thought to feel and work differently, think and work differently. All right, any questions? Yes, so this is a scientific fact. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body and vice versa. So it was also believed that left-handed people would always be great artists, great visual artists, because it was believed they were right brain thinkers. But now the scientific belief refutes that. And I have here a Harvard paper. It is written by um, a doctor, Robert H. Merling. And he is the senior faculty editor at Harvard Health and also the advisory board member of Harvard Health Publishing. And he has written an essay uh, the first paragraph of which says, if you're like me, you learn that about 90% of people are right-handed and much of the reason is genetic. And that's true, although it remains a mystery why our genetic evolution has led to so many more righties than lefties. But for certain tasks, handedness can be overcome. For example, right-handed kids learning to play tennis, golf, or baseball can become successful hitting from the other side. It may be more a matter of how they are taught 
And what gets reinforced than about a hand-wired preference for one hand or the other? So the science is changing. And now I'm going to show a very short video about this question, and then we're going to go to work on our art. So bear with me. I know you're all itching to draw. Just let me find this video. Here it is. And trust me, this is all going to help with the artwork that we're going to do today. Hopefully this will work. If I can make it big. Behold the human brain. I can't make it bigger. Sorry about that. And right side. This structure has inspired one of the most pervasive ideas about the brain, that the left side controls logic and the right creativity. And yet, this is a myth, unsupported by scientific evidence. So how did this misleading idea come about? And what does it get wrong? It's true that the brain has a right and a left side. This is most apparent with the outer layer, or the cortex. Internal regions, like the striatum, hypothalamus, thalamus, and brainstem, appear to be made from continuous tissue. But in fact, they're also organized with left and Oops, sorry. Sorry, it's going to start again. Sorry about that. Behold the human brain, its lumpy landscape visibly split into a left and right side. This structure has inspired one of the most pervasive ideas about the brain, that the left side controls logic and the right creativity. And yet, this is a myth, unsupported by scientific evidence. So how did this misleading idea come about, and what does it get wrong? It's true that the brain has a right and a left side. This is most apparent with the outer layer, or the cortex. Internal regions, like the striatum, hypothalamus, thalamus, and brainstem, appear to be made from continuous tissue. But in fact, they're also organized with left and right sides. The left and the right sides of the brain do control different body functions, such as movement and sight. The brain's right side controls the motion of the left arm and leg, and vice versa. The visual system is even more complex. Each eye has a left and right visual field. Both left visual fields are sent to the right side of the brain, and both right fields are sent to the left side. So the brain uses both sides to make a complete image of the world. Scientists don't know for sure why we have that crossing loop. One theory is it began soon after animals developed more complex nervous systems because it gave the survival advantage of quicker reflexes. If an animal sees a predator coming from its left side, it's best off escaping to the right. So we can say that vision and movement control are two systems that rely on this left-right structure. But problems arise when we overextend that idea to logic and creativity. This misconception began in the mid-1800s when two neurologists, Broca and Wernicke, examined patients who had problems communicating due to injuries. The researchers found damage to the patient's left temporal lobes, so they suggested that language is controlled by the left side of the brain. That captured the popular imagination. Author Robert Louis Stevenson then introduced the idea of a logical left hemisphere competing with an emotional right hemisphere, represented by his characters, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But this idea didn't hold up when doctors and scientists 
examined patients who were missing a hemisphere or had their two hemispheres separated. These patients showed a complete range of behaviors, both logical and creative. Later research showed that one side of the brain is more active than the other for some functions. Language is more localized to the left and attention to the right. So one side of the brain may do more work, but this varies by system rather than by person. There isn't any evidence to suggest that individuals have dominant sides of the brain or to support the idea of a left-right split between logic and creativity. Some people may be particularly logical or creative, but that has nothing to do with the sides of their brains. And even the idea of logic and creativity being at odds with each other doesn't hold up well. Solving complex math problems requires inspired creativity, and many vibrant works of art have intricate logical frameworks. Almost every feat of creativity and logic carries the mark of the whole brain functioning as one. All right. So I thought that was really interesting. The theories that Betty Edwards books are based on are now being refuted. However, the exercises in her books, like I mentioned earlier, still hold water. And, and in fact, the first exercise that we're gonna do actually shows that there is a difference between visual thinking and non-visual thinking. And doing this exercise is gonna help you become very good at drawing. So I'm gonna ask Laura, please, our wonderful librarian, who we have to all do a big thank you to, to set up the camera because I'm gonna do a demonstration. Folks at home, I'm gonna be handing out to folks here a handout that they're gonna use but you're gonna be able to recreate this handout on your own. You may also be able to find it on the internet. It is called the face vase. So if you want to do a search for the face vase exercise while we're setting up, I'm gonna put in the chat box for those of you who may be hearing challenged as I am. It's called the face vase. Oops. Okay, everyone can see it, correct? And have your pencil sharpened. And ready to go. You're probably gonna want an eraser. Everyone here, you just need now a pencil and an eraser. And we're gonna get set up to do our first demonstration. For the face. Any questions? So I'm gonna go off screen for a minute while we get set up. There's a bit of feedback, I'm not sure why, but we'll correct that for you. And, and any, I guess while people are setting up, if there are any thoughts or ideas about the science we just learned, you could just call out or put something in the chat. Oh, 
Folks at home, you will be able to see the demonstration. We're just getting set up. So give us a minute. Folks here, you can watch on the screen, or if you like, you can just go to the entirely up to you. Those of you who are my veteran students, Heather and I mean that you knew Cheryl and Sally tomorrow, I have an option for you. So you do need to Yeah, it's if we can get as close as possible because the white paper is so bright. Or maybe we can turn the overhead. Zoom the overhead light. All right, so and the option that I'm going to give the folks at home, you veteran students, this is your option also. Okay. All right, so this. The option that I, and I'm going to give that option last. I want to give. All right, so those of you who've never done this before, I want you, or those of you who want a refresher, I want you to use the handout first that I'm giving today. There is a line here on the page. And the direction, don't look at it. The direction for this exercise, for this exercise, is to copy this line exactly the way you see it, but on the other side. So watch me. Watch me and think about why I would be asking you to do this. Also watch the way in which I do it.
So think about who I am. Touch my behavior. Struggle is revealing. that I know it's not going right is a good thing. That's exactly what I'm hoping to achieve. Fine. Um. All right, so who wants to talk about why, first of all, do you think this would be a good drawing exercise? To do it the same, you have to really copy it, right? You have to really look hard and observe. So how is my behavior? Frustrated. Frustrated? <laughs> Did I work fast? No, no. No, it was slow. I struggled. I had to really think. I kept looking back and forth. I took my glasses off because I was second guessing what I was doing. I wasn't sure. I was vulnerable. I erased a lot. I've been trying since I was seven years old. I'm a professional artist. <laughs> Hello, this is the process of drawing. And this is what artists go through every time we put pencil to paper. And this exercise in Betty Edwards' book, she makes people do this first. She does it to prove that you can switch from left brain to right brain that you can go from the analytic side of the brain to the visual side of the brain. But really what it's about is learning how to observe, how to really look at what you are trying to copy. Whether you're using left or right side of the brain doesn't really matter. It's learning to focus and be patient with yourself and look at what you're trying to draw. All right, so we're all going to try this. Those of you at home, if you can't find this image and print it out, and those of you here who are veterans, 
Here's what you're going to do. You are going to create your own line. If you are right-handed, you are going to, do they see my hand? Okay, good. You are going to create a crazy profile on the left-hand side of the paper. Think witch or old hag with crazy teeth, a big nose, a chin that sticks out, and a shoulder. And then you do the same thing. Try and copy that line exactly the way it looks on the other side. It's easier for me the second time. You notice how much quicker I'm going? That's true too. Now, if you're left-handed, do I have any left-handed people in this class? Okay, well that makes it easier. Yes, I will ask in a minute. All right, any questions? Now it's called the face vase. Because if you have time, you can connect the top and bottom and take a black marker if you like and color it in. Vase, V A S E, Vase, Vase, Vase. All right, so folks at home, if you don't have access to this image online, you can create your own. So you do this kind of crazy profile on the left-hand side first, and you copy it on the right second. Folks who are here, you have the option to take one of these. I would, even those of you who are experienced, do this again. You saw how I struggled. It's a great way to warm up today. We're, we're right here, I'm taking. Oh, it's really difficult. Like I said, I've been drawing for umpty ump years. So folks at home, are you good to go? <clears throat> I'm sorry. No. Than I anticipated it was going to be, but it's awesome. It's really difficult. So folks at home, you may have had a head start. So if, if you have completed one, do another. Folks here are just getting started. I'm not timing you. No, because this is the personal thing. I do have other things I want to accomplish today, but I'm not timing you on this. This is not like when we're drawing figurative work, surely. But this, <clears throat> this will really help you with your figurative work. That's why I'm doing this, Shirley, because I have noticed that when we're drawing from life, some of you are struggling again. And this, I'm deliberately doing this. Bear with me, everybody. This is specifically for Shirley. Listen to me, Shirley. This is going to help you with when we're trying to love. Okay. Yes. No, this is correct. So if you've done one at home, do another. And in a few minutes, we're going to share how it felt.
Some people may find this either easier than others. Some people might find it extremely difficult. It's all good. Some people may find it difficult just because it's a bad day for you. You might try it tomorrow and it might be a snap, a breeze, and hard today. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a question from Lauren. No, you don't have to make points of origin. No. It's one line, one continuous line. Yes, one stroke. You're doing good, Lord. All right, just a couple more minutes. If you did not get to finish, that's okay too. If you have finished already, start a new one, but with your own mama. Another fun thing to do, those of you who are here, ask somebody next to you to create a line and copy their line. It's another thing you can do. Oh, Lisa, you do it right on here. You do it on here. Okay. Copy it right on here. Yes, yes, that's what I did. Here's mine. You copy it right on the hand end. Yes, sorry. You copy it right on the hand end. See? Right on the actual photograph. See? Yeah, I know. Oh, you really like to one of the ones over the getting <coughs> Yes, but I Okay, one more minute on this one. Folks at home, you all good? Got a thumbs up from Lizzie. Lizzie, this is gonna help you with proportions. This kind of nitty gritty stuff. It's learning what we call observational skills. Alice, you're our resident scientist. You should be good at this. I'm curious to see how, how it went with you. Well, the execution is no better whether you know the neuroscience behind it or not. <laughs> no, but I mean your skills for observation. Oh, <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I don't I don't mean to put the pressure on you. All right. I I think it's enough. Anybody want to share how it felt? We're going to start with folks here first. 
How did it feel? You can just call out. Okay. Okay. So Heather and Eileen both were sharing. It wasn't a confident line. She kept going over the same line over and over again. Anybody else? Okay. Shirley had to think twice before she did anything. Did anybody feel confident doing this? All right, our youngest member said, I did. And to see, to me, this is revealing because she hasn't been taught to be inhibited no. about her abilities yet. So that's revealing. All right. Anyone else here want to share how it felt? You saw how I struggled. Right. Right. Which scientists used to believe was proof that there is a struggle between the left and right hemisphere of the brain. But now they're saying no. So it's interesting because here you really do feel, right, some kind of stress going on there because it almost feels like your mind is telling your hand what to do. So we're not sure what that science is about. Although, Alice, do you know a little more? Well, it turns out that your prefrontal cortex is really important in creativity and uh, coming to conclusions about many different things in developing a script. And so a script is just like when a child notices that when you drop something, it always falls down, you know, and they'd be very surprised even at a very young age if they dropped something and it flew up instead. So that's why balloons are so exciting. So we have these scripts and schemas of what things should look like because we pay Yes. very close attention to their face or facial features. And yes. so that's what we emphasize in the drawing of them. Yes. And I've said this often too, we rather than look at the object we're trying to draw, we refer to what I call the Pictionary in our brain. And we draw, for example, if I were to say to you, draw a face, Frequently, you would draw your, the image of a face that you carry in your brain rather than looking at the person's face and drawing it. And Eileen, that's probably what you were going through. You were drawing a picture of what the line looked like, not actually copying the line that you saw. Alice, thank you. Excellent. All right, folks at home, do you want to one other thought? What? I, I have one thought. I didn't have trouble drawing it, but looking at it, my eye keeps going like hard to focus on the negative or the positive. That's the Meaning struggle. Direction, Visually. right? Uh, just like, you know, seeing the bars or seeing the faces. Okay. So looking at that image, like my brain or whatever, kept going back and forth to which image is it? The, so the, the illusion. The okay, Lizzie. Like thank you. Physically feel that struggle. Mm. Okay, cool. So the optical illusion of whether or not it was a face or a vase caused you problems. Awesome. Mm. And for me, every time I do this exercise, it's the directionality of the line. Is it going in or is it sticking out? That's what I intellectually I struggle with every time. All right, anyone else, or do you want to move on to the next? Uh, I struggled with um, my hands wanted to go really fast, and my brain was slowing me down. <laughs> Got it. 
Who is that sharing? Doris. Doris, thank you. Yes. So that's another thing about drawing. Our brain always wants us to go faster. But if you want to draw realistically, frequently, you have to slow down to really see what's in front of you. And there are a couple of artists in this class who I have a lot of respect for because you stop and look at whatever it is you're drawing for a few minutes before you actually put pen to paper or pencil to paper. So that's a good tip too. Sometimes it pays to slow down. And the next exercise we're going to do is an exercise in slowing down. And it's one that my veteran students are quite familiar with. It is called blind contour. So blind contour is a drawing exercise that artists have been forced to do for eons and centuries, forever. Blind contour is a technique that forces you to observe what is in front of you. It also forces you to slow down in your technique if you do it correctly. And I'm going to now do a demonstration of blind contour. But first, I'm going to tell you the rules for blind contour. In blind contour, you're not going to be blindfolded because I really want you to look and see what's in front of you. But you are not going to look at your paper. You are only going to look at the object you are going to draw. This exercise, you're going to be timed. You start drawing when I say go, and you stop when I say stop. You are not allowed to lift your pencil from the paper, and you cannot erase. So those are the rules. No looking at your paper. No starting until I say go. No stopping till I say stop. You do one continuous line and no erasing. Everybody got that? In a minute, I'll put those rules in the chat. But first, I'm going to do the demonstration. So, Laura, if you could set up the camera again, please. And I'm going to grab a chair. Folks at home, it's going to just take a minute. Set up. Oh, somebody put a link in the chat box. What is that? Oh, now it's, is it going? Oh, that's nice. Someone put a link to the PDF for the first three exercises in the right side of the brain book. Thank you so much, Lauren. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. I didn't know you could do that. I wonder if Betty Edwards knows you can do that. The exercises are from her actual website. I think it's, um, you know, a, a preview of the workbook. But the textbook, I don't know, it's a link, I think, from an art student. And um, it's up there. So everyone can follow along. Thank you very much. Sure, anytime. Does she have the upside down drawing? Because we're going to do that today, too. I put a link to um, an exercise page. It was just a Bing search. Um, so people can print off either the right or the left handed version. They have both worksheets available. So there should be three links. I just okay. sent you the latter two of the, um, the book and the workbook, but the actual class chat should have the link for the oh, face this face. for the face face could you do me a favor and see yeah. if this 
something called the upside down drawing. There's a Picasso. Sure, you got it. Just give me uh, a minute. You're, I'm gonna, you're gonna be my paid assistant soon. All right. It would be my pleasure. So blind hunt and my veteran students, I have an option for you guys to do not despair. Yes. Folks at home, you can see me, right? Wait, oh, I just turned this. People here, you really want to watch. So either watch me on the screen or you can come close and watch. Notice the way my body is. I have turned my body completely parallel to the table so that I can't see my paper. Remember, rule number one is you cannot look at your paper. You're not looking at your paper, all right? So what is your guess? Do you think your drawing is going to look like anything? Absolutely not. I want your drawing to look like a bunch of scribbles. This is what I have to do in art school. So while I do this, try and think about why I'm doing it. Lisa, you got to watch me. Lisa, watch. The second rule is I'm doing one continuous line without touch, uh, without stopping. I am looking at the lines in the palm of my hand. Watch me, don't look, don't do it yet. Don't draw yet. Just look at me. Look at me. Watch my behavior. How I'm doing it. Stop. This is one of the most relaxing things you could ever do because you will get so deeply involved with the little tiny lines in your hand. You will forget where you are. You will forget what you're doing. You will be doing a blind contour drawing of your hand. There is a lot going on in the human hand. Many, many, many little lines and crevices and wrinkles and marks. And it doesn't look like a hand. Those of you at home probably can't see a thing. It's just a lot of little chicken scratches. Why am I asking you to do this? Anybody? Right? I'm looking and observing and looking to see what's in front of me. I'm not worried about the outcome. I could care less what the drawing looks like. It's not important in this kind of exercise. It's going to come out looking like a bunch of scribbles. In fact, if you do a drawing here that looks like a hand, I know you're doing it wrong. I always say there's no right and wrong in art. But in this case, 
if you do a joint that looks like a hand today, not right. It's not blind content. All right. So you have to trust me on this one. It feels a little crazy, right? It feels completely insane. But it works. It really works. Those of you here, you need a piece of blank paper and a pencil. No erasers, because you're not allowed to erase. Folks at home, you need a piece of paper and a sharp pencil. And here we go. We're going to do blind contour. This one is going to be timed because, like me, you may get lost in space. It is one of the most meditative things you can do. So I know you think this may be boring. You may think I'm nuts, but it's incredibly therapeutic. All right, my veteran students, which are a lot of you at home, if you do not want to do a blind contour of your hand, which I think is the most interesting object on earth, you could take something from your purse or something from your studio, those of you at home, um, something complex. The more complex, don't start yet. Woohoo! Rule number two is you wait for me to say go. And those of you at home, I trust you not to look at your paper. All right. <laughs> Find something complex around your home if you don't want to do a blind contour of your hand. So the first blind contour we're going to do will be a quickie. But we're going to gradually get more complex. And if you're doing your hand, you need to put your hand in a comfortable position. Turn your body away from the edge of your table. And just give me a minute to set my timer. And this is just going to be one minute. Begin. Drawing is meditation. This is what we do. Stop. How did it feel? Did you like doing that? You felt? You felt just like yourself. Something interesting. You felt the much. Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to do a longer one. Those of you who are new to this, you're going to do your hand again. Those of you who are more veteran, do something else. You can do the sole of your shoe. Oh, well, it's your in person. So, Helen, get some paper and pencil and take a seat. Um, the sole of your shoe is interesting. You can take your shoe off and put it on the table. Um, but those of you who are new to this, continue with your hand. And this one we're going to do for, are you ready? Five minutes. Do you think you can do it? Yes. I think you can. 
So Helen, we're doing blind contour. Do you remember what that means? All right, good. Take a seat. One continuous line. Yep. Don't look at your paper. It's the same rules. Wait, I didn't say go yet. And begin. Really observe the lines in what you're drawing. Care what it looks like when you're done. Slowly falling on the line. Slowly. Slowly. Makes it dull. Say stop. Going. Inching along the lines that you're looking at. It's like you're entering into another world. How deeply can you go? Keep going, don't stop. One continuous line. As slow as you can. Inch along those contours. Go slow mo. Erase. Lines cross over each other.
Exactly. How did it feel this time? <laughs> Good, you're laughing. That's what I want to hear. You're laughing because it looks completely silly, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just a mess of scribbles. That's what I want to have you achieve. Folks at home, how did it feel? Good, bad. Robin, how did it feel? <laughs> you muted. Okay. It feels good. I really enjoy doing it and I like what I end up getting. It's almost like I'd like to put colors in it. Okay. It just, it's such a crazy looking thing, but it, it's, it's fun. I really enjoy it. So, thanks. Cool. Anyone else at home? Courtney, what'd you think? Um, <laughs> my, I, I don't know quite what to say. I guess um, my first thought was my arm got tired because I'm wussy. Uh, <laughs> but okay. I guess I kind of ended up with something that looks a bit like a dinosaur skull, and that's kind of cool. It's obviously nothing right. like a hand, but um, yeah, so, you don't really pay that much attention to just how many uh, knots and crosses are in your hand until you're staring at it for five minutes straight. Good. All right. Well, that's what I hope to hear that you are really observing what's in front of you. So that's terrific. All right, we're gonna do one more of these, not of your hand this time. I want everyone to take a piece of paper and crumple it up, crumple it up and let it expand. Just the piece of paper that you've been drawing on. So it doesn't have to be a fresh piece of paper, just crumple it up. And that's what you're going to draw. I want you to notice all the lines and edges in the paper. Put that in front of you. Get another sheet of paper to draw on. And when I say go, you're going to go. So I'm going to wait a second for people here. Some people need new paper. This will be the final blind contour. And we're going to do this one for another five minutes. And then we're going to do a final drawing that's probably going to take the entire class. Um, and Lauren, for those of you at home, Lauren found it for us. It is a, well, I'll talk about it when we're done with this blind contour. Yes, so this will be the same directions. We are going to do a blind contour for five minutes. You're not going to look at the paper that you're drawing on. You're just going to look at the crumpled paper now. So good. You're going to turn your body away from the paper. You're going to do one continuous line and you're not going to start till I say go. So I'm waiting just one more minute till everyone's ready. And then we'll begin. You okay, Ham? Okay. So we're going to begin. Everybody go. Begin. Line contour, one continuous line.
A technique that Betty Edwards actually, I, I'm not sure if she invented this one, but this is probably one of the most popular exercises in her book. This one I never had to do in art school, but I like this one. This one really works. It's called upside down drawing. You're not going to stand on your head and draw upside down but I'm gonna show you how it works in the last and final demonstration. And it's gonna help you see how all of the techniques that I showed you so far come together to help you draw realistically. We are going to copy a drawing by Pablo Picasso. And you are going to see that you too can draw with similar skills to the great Picasso himself. Picasso is arguably one of the greatest draftsmen who ever lived. And I'm gonna to prove to you today that because you have been warming up your observational skills, that you too can draw well. Are you ready? And Lauren, God bless her, has provided you in the chat box a link to the drawing, those of you at home, the upside down drawing by Pablo Picasso. So it's in the book, it's in the workbook. The problem being, Lauren, do you have it upside down or right side up in the link? Problem is, if you don't have a printer, um, it's going to be difficult. If you have a printer, those of you who are at home, you can print it out. You're going to have to be able to turn it upside down. If you don't have a printer, you could go to the link on your phone and turn your phone upside down. Does that make sense to those of you who are at home? You need to look at the image yeah. upside down in order for this to work. Those are Apologies. You uh, I'm putting it in the, the upside down. I think the pages are right side up, but it's got, it's the workbook page. I, uh, I, I yeah. don't know. It is, uh, ready to go? You Sorry have a link, that. you have a yes, link right upside down as well? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. I owe you big sure. time. Now that I know we can actually upload pages from her book, I will provide this for those of you at home next time. I, I was unaware that this was a possibility. So thank you, Lauren. All right, so Lauren is providing for all of you at home the link to go directly to the page uh, you know what, once I've done the demonstration, those of you at home, I can put it up on the screen for you. Are we doing the figure or are we doing the horse? You're doing the Picasso figure. Although, Margot, you're a veteran student. You could do, let me talk about that later, okay? okay. I'll, I'll describe the directions to the veteran students after I do the demo. All right, so folks at home, I'm all set up for the demo, thanks to the great Laura. Um, and I'm now gonna move from this screen to the other. All right, folks here, you can either look at the TV screen or watch from here, you can get up and move on. All right, so here is the drawing by Pablo Picasso. And Laura has provided it for you. Um, <sighs> beautiful line, and it's a portrait of um, Stravinsky. 
Are we going to do this? I should just um, go down here first. If I can get the Negative the Go ahead, keep going. Run the right track. It's a guy. It's a guy. Sorry, I didn't hear that last. More than the paper itself? Yes, more than the paper itself. What? What? Why do you think? I'm asking you. Oh. <laughs> All right, the answer may reveal itself as I do the That's a tip up right there. So remember, I started by saying the original Picasso is in a frame, and now you recreated the frame on the second piece of paper. It's going to help you figure out where parts of this picture are on your piece of paper. The second thing you're going to do, if you are right-handed, you are going to put the Picasso picture on the left, and your blank piece of paper will frame on your right. And those of you who really like being exact in your work, you might want to take your papers down on the page. Well, no, it's because it's going to help you really have the guidelines in place. And there's nothing wrong with doing this. Okay. You don't need an excessive amount of paper, though. It's just saying, don't spend the rest of the class taking down. Mm -hmm. Notice where I'm placing the picture frames, though. See? I've got the picture frames lined up. I place four. See? Thank you. 
really going to help you visually. The other thing this print tab has for you is there are little notches or marks. You need to measure those of you are precision people. You can measure the exact distance. I don't know. I can't tell you how many centimeters because I'm going to mark it on the ruler. So I know that that guide line goes right there. So on the bottom, top parts of the frame as well. This kind of thing all the time. You can create guidelines. If you're my veteran students when you did your human face, you know, we always put those guidelines. Okay, so when I draw, I start at the top and work down. I recommend you do that as well. Everybody's style is different, however, it's up to you. I also like to look at, as I mentioned, negative space. I like to look at what I call the negative space. See where I'm coloring in here? And I like to start there. Why do you think I have? Picture upside down. You look at the line. It forces me to look at line and shape and not worry about, oh my God, it's a person. Mm -hmm. I can't draw people. Are you kidding? I put Picasso. I can't do that. When it's upside down, it looks more. Thing. It's just a bunch of lines, and it becomes something completely objective to draw, just like the lines in your hand. It's a warm-up exercise, Lee. It's a good way to learn how to draw. Now, you see where this line is very close to our guideline mark? Guideline exactly where it is in this picture, so I know where to put this on. So it goes. And look at relationship this line in relation to this line. And I already see that this shape is not picking up. So I do, I erase and correct. Nothing wrong with the erasure. I go back. So those relationships that you're now going to really start seeing because you did all the fine kind of work first. All right. Any questions about? This will be our final drawing. We really don't have time to do anything except this bit. We may not even finish this one, which is okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Those of you who are my veterans, you can try. This one's really hard. This is the hardest of all three. You know why? It's so simple. <laughs> 
simple is harder to do for this one. It's harder to do than this. The more lines there are, the more relationships you have. I recommend if you've never done this exercise before, you did the Picasso. Yes. You do the horse because you struggle more. And wait, wait, you want one of each. They're all in the book, in the workbook, yeah. All right, folks at home, are you okay? This is a little more difficult for you if you don't have a printer. So I'm going to put the image on the screen. I hope. Well, Lauren found the link for us. Lauren, this is the upside down one. Right. First three exercises. Wow. This is the actual upside down image. Okay. I'm going to open that. Yes. Okay, so yes. You can do whatever you want. You're so good. You can do whatever you want. Okay, folks at home, can you see now? Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see? Awesome. Okay. So it's going to be more challenging for you to draw from the screen, unfortunately, but it can be done. I'm sorry, Laura. Oh. So we only have 10 minutes left, but... This is something you could definitely work on at home. The library is so generous, we could go over our allotted time by a few minutes, Laura said. But I think you're getting the drift. Learning skills of observation are the way the route to learning how to draw realistically. That's what it's all about. And you can do it at home all the time. You just create a little mini still life for yourself, collect some interesting ob objects, sit down, do some blind contour for warm up, and then just sit and draw. Try and let go of the desire to make the perfect end product. Start thinking about learning how to observe. Everything else will follow. That is living proof, right? Practice, practice.
Now work slowly. Get to these gems. Take your time. We have 10 minutes. You can bring it home too. If you have time, you can get it started and finish it around. Oh, seems like you have to go. Go ahead. You know, mom can take a picture and you can name one of the pictures that she can get. All right. Any day, anytime you get a day off from school, if it's on Wednesday, you can come out. All right. Yeah, that's a perfect way to do it. So we're not gonna have time to share today, folks at home. You can send me JPEGs. Uh, I'm gonna put my, let's see, can I get to the chat? Uh-oh, what did I do? Where did the picture go? Dude, where did the picture go? What is all this garbage? I don't know what happened to the picture. That's nuts. Yeah, but the, the Picasso picture disappeared. Here it is. There it is. So um, I'm trying to get to the chat because I know Courtney, you don't have my email address, but you can always send me JPEGs of your work, everyone. If you want advice. Yeah, I'm in uncharted technological territory at the moment. I cannot get to the chat box. Sorry, everyone. No, it's something about the image. I'm just, I'm in preview. So next week, we will continue with our drawing skills with or without Betty Edwards. And I promise by the end of this month, you will see a huge improvement. And those of you who are used to working with me, you will feel refreshed and revived and just ready to keep going. I think we are having uh, our model back for the last class. I don't recall though. So don't quote me on that. But I think we're having Bill for the absolute last class.
People are finding this to be relaxing. The more complicated the drawing, the easier it is for me to Because you're you're slow here, work with your style. You don't work with the And you're here. So let me, I have to talk to the people at home. So folks at home, I don't know if you heard me. The more complicated the drawing you try to copy, the easier it is for you to learn your drawing skills. So if you want to do more of this at home, there are plenty of images online of drawings that you can print out. You want line drawings, black and white line drawings. Picasso is a great person to look for and choose from because he really was an exceptional draftsman. But there are other fantastic people. Alice Neal, if you wanna look for female artists, there are plenty of those as well. So, in one more minute, I do have to say goodbye to everyone. If you complete this drawing and you want to share it with me, I'm going to stop the share now. You can send me a JPEG. I'm going to put my email in the chat box for those of you who don't have it. And Courtney, if you're still with us, one second, Sally. It was a pleasure working with you, and I hope you come back. And please do share anything with me at my email. And if you want me to add you to our mailing list, we have a mailing list that I send advance notice about our classes. You can let me know your email address. All right. Well done, everyone. I know it seemed crazy and different today, and you might not have understood what it was all about, but I guarantee it's going to make more sense as we go further along in September doing more drawing skill exercises. Pat yourselves on the back for a job well done, and I look forward to seeing you next week. All right, take care, art on, and hooray. Enjoy the weekend. I hope it cools off. Bye-bye.